Welcome to the I Know Bado podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the I Know Bado podcast. Coming at you from the local 218 studios. I'm here with my brother. I got bit by a dog the other day. Jeez. <laughs> Absolute moron. Uh, and over to the Gabriel Johnson. Hey, Dave, how you doing? I'm doing excellent. What do you know for me? You know, I know the uh, squirt white hockey team from Brainerd. Uh, it's a terrible name. 20 to 0 victory. <laughs> In hockey? to 0. Oh, 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 oh. My son's the goaltender, so I'm proud of the one save he had. No. <laughs> the, the one save? <laughs> Tw- 20 he let, up, he let up 20? No, no. He, no, we scored 20. Oh, okay, okay. And he only had to stop one puck yeah, in 45 yeah. minutes of hockey. It was, it was pretty ugly. How old? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I... I Nine-year-olds. You had posted that because the first time around, he let up four goals, and you said almost immediately. Yeah, they lost four to one, but he didn't give up any in the second or third. Okay, yep. So he's doing exactly what we said, just yep. crushing it. However, I was not aware that it was just one shot no, on goal. Uh, I, Ooh, that's dominance. It was... It wasn't fun. And the team that we played... <laughs> no doubt, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it was fun for the boys. We had like four boys with hat tricks. But it was not fun. And the team we played had to drive like three and a half hours to come here. Oh, no, dude. So Well, people good. say they like coming to Brainerd. But that's the youth sports update. Bigger news. Yes. Professional sports Professional, update. let's hear it. Do you see these Timberwolves jerseys last night? They are... Beautiful, no. <laughs> beautiful jerseys. We and we won. They are. We put on the new city jerseys and we win. So he's being facetious because I, he knows that I hate the new uh, Timberwolves jerseys. Like Twin Cities or something across. The they don't even say that. So they're they they took and just put a bunch of colored bars, and the bars uh, are just random. Each jersey is a one of one. Yes, the the colored bars are. Every color we've ever used in a Timberwolves logo. That's in history. what they say. It's nonsense. It's all. I'm a designer. <laughs> that everything that is being told to Depends you about that colors are. that jersey is nonsense. That that is the laziest design I've ever seen. And then it is somebody <laughs> writing a paragraph to try and explain what their art is. I've I went to art school. I know how the game is played. <laughs> this is not design. <laughs> If but you have to explain your art, it's like explaining your joke. Yes. It's not good. Yeah, so evidently all of the jerseys are one of one because the bars are different because they're all – basically they just took their their screen and just shifted it a little bit down and then, oh, that now that's that's the new jersey for Cat. Okay, shift it down a little bit. There's Ant's jersey. They're one <laughs> of one. Just the most ridiculous <laughs> thing in the world. Uh, Timberwolves. So, I'm blaming A Rod. Yeah. So no, you're wrong. Those jerseys are terrible, and I'm, I'm upset that they that they won with them because now people are going to accept them, I demand as, them every night. God, it's the worst. All right. Well, that's enough out of you. I, I, and honestly, get that nonsense out of here. Beautiful. No, it's it's terrible. Those jerseys are the worst. And and I'm gonna get. I I should get the write up of what the guy said. It's about like all the different colors represent all of the different creative powers in the Minneapolis area. We are so diverse in our ability to have all these different artists. And come on, get nice out of here. Nice PR with that. scripted stunt. It's yep. so not. It's such nonsense. Anyways, get it out of here. Hey, that that's a new voice. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Hanky Q. Hazelton. I'm actually pretty excited. This is my first podcast, being able to come on Dave's, the mayor, as I call him. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Uh, just a small town boy who's now a news reporter, telling some local stories and letting the people know what's going on in their town. Yeah, that's awesome. That was your 30 seconds to explain yourself. Uh, what, so let, I'm going to dive in a little deeper here, though. So you are originally from Florida, correct? No, I'm originally from Michigan. I'm a oh, Michigan okay. boy. So, but, you, did you come from Florida? I though? did. I came okay. from Florida. Okay. All right. So, I wanted to stay. Originally, <laughs> so did you, you get caught this? <laughs> no. So, it started in Michigan. Uh, went down to college in Florida, or yeah. So, I went to college in Florida for okay. two years. Okay. At the Dan Patrick School of Sports Casting. Oh, nice. Wow. And then was the best decision that I made to get my foot in the industry yeah. of kind of get myself into TV. Yeah. So here I am today. Yeah. So uh, we get a lot of people up here at the local PBS station and uh, mm-hmm. they kind of, you know, you, you go through the motions of, of you get on, you're there for a little while and then you move on to your career. And uh, we've had a couple of good ones, had a couple stinkers, won't say who, <laughs> uh, but I guess, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you immediately stood out. You did a, uh, 
you did a report on Street Fest this last year. The best PBS report of the year. It was amazing. It was actually amazing. I remember getting done and I sent a text to somebody and just said, this dude's going places. Like, this is this is legit real stuff here. So I mean, I truly enjoy myself with being able to, even though you do a lot of the work yourself, well, yep. I shouldn't say a lot, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all myself, but once you realize what your product is after it's all said and done and someone comes to you and is like, hey, man, like you said, like that's yeah. really good. It's like, oh, man, I think I do have a shot at this. Yeah. So I truly enjoy all the uh, all the behind-the-scenes stuff that people don't really see. That, that uh, Street Fest bit you did was like even better than early perk at play. I don't know if you know Perkins from Care 11, recently retired. Yep. No. Minnesota celebrity kind of just okay. did – immersive type reporting stuff and it was better than anything he had ever done and it was just i appreciate that it was great yeah it was uh it definitely stood out and uh you know street fest is a great event that we love uh and you know we've put in a lot of work over the last what 10 years 15 years Mm -hmm. running that event and uh to see someone come in and like actually do it justice was great so thank you for that yeah no problem that's what i'm here for uh, what's your, what's your big goal? What's your vision? Where do you want to be? So I kind of have like three different big goals. Okay. Uh, I definitely want to have my own talk show one day. Oh, nice. And, and I know a lot of times we see people with all celebrities on there, which is, I still want to have those people on there, but I want to bring a little bit more recognition to like the common person. Sure. So it's like you hear of a, you know, heart, good, feel story, yep. something, you know, searching through TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And it's like, Hey, come on my show. Let's talk about it and see if we can get you some more publicity. Yeah. Things along those lines. Uh, I'm really interested in politics. Okay. Um, I, I kind of heard that. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of getting down that road. I've been talking to some different people, seeing what happens. I don't know if, you know, this is the exact look. But considering I'm not a politician <laughs> yet, uh, I'm looking to dig my feet in and uh, see what happens there. I can tell you, you should have ran for mayor. Yeah. <laughs> you could have won. You could have won. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. It was up for it was up for grabs. Uh you know, it's interesting you say that about like getting into politics. Like technically Gabe and myself are politicians. I would never say that I'm a politician because that's not really what my goal is. Although I have said this. If someone asked me to be governor and run for governor, you bet your freaking ass I'll do that. So that's 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 the thing that I want to like. Okay, here's kind of the timeline. I figured if I could get myself into TV, hopefully move up markets. Yeah. I'm letting people see and know who I am. They're like, okay, I kind of like this guy because nine times out of ten, when you look at a TV screen and you see this blonde black guy, <laughs> you're like, I don't really probably want to watch this, but I'm very curious to see like is gonna... who is this trying to tell my conservative news? And what is he? What is he doing with this? <laughs> you know, this big slap Grandpa of Jerry back here, like honey, honey, honey. I don't know about this. And they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> so. I figured if I can get myself up higher and higher markets, the more and more people know of me, yep. you know, will kind of help push my message and who I am. Obviously, I can't be like too political, but the the big goal would be to go back to Michigan and hopefully run for the governor. Hey, oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, we'll have competing governors here. When when, when we're both in we'll the we'll be friends. Matches, we'll go back and forth. Yeah, we'll get we'll we'll uh, reconcile the differences between our two states. Absolutely. Um. So speaking of elections, so we had our election, correct? Uh. And obviously, Gabe Johnson reelected. Myself reelected. By a congratulations. Large thank, <laughs> you, thank you. <laughs> Gabe, by a, Gabe by a huge margin. Uh. You could you could make a jersey with the amount of margin. Literally dozens of us. <laughs> uh. Myself. I, I had the honor of being of running unopposed, uh, which is may, maybe good, maybe bad. I don't know. Uh, it, you would assume that it, it means that you're doing a good job, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think it's more so that just nobody really wants. <laughs> we'll just say yeah. <laughs> nobody really wants the job. Uh, but this year, I made sure that I went in and got uh, the actual write-ins of who wrote in, uh, who wrote in other people. To, you can see that to try and t- yeah. If you're the candidate, you can ask for the write-ins. That's awesome. Um, so I did this year, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm just going to give you a couple of the votes that uh, people gave. There were, there were, I think three people that got multiple votes. All of them were actual people. So our previous mayor, Ed Mink, got three votes. So oh. <laughs> coming at me here, coming at me. He doesn't me. have any kids at home. No. No, there's somebody out there. That somebody out there is uh, is voting for our previous mayor. So that so that means that that's a vote against me. I I take that I take that as a hey, you know what the other guy did a better job, which I don't blame <laughs> you. He probably did. Uh, <laughs> uh, we talked earlier about the fence gate. Chuck Barone fence gate. 
Got two votes. Saw that. Yep. So he got two votes. Uh, after that, it was just uh, a grab bag of votes. But Scott. Well, made... well, well, it wasn't just a grab bag of votes. <laughs> I will say there was one vote that stood out in particular. Uh, that, that person doesn't count. We don't count Gabe Johnson. <laughs> I got a write-in vote, and it was not from my ward. So it wasn't yeah, me. It yeah. wasn't my wife or daughter. It was somebody else in the city thinks Gabe should probably be married. I say that that was a podcast vote. Someone gave you a podcast vote. Thank you to our podcast listener for giving Gabe some love. Uh, however, you should vote for him for his own election because, God damn it, it was close. Uh, so Scott made fun of uh, the first one, which you actually said there's no way in hell. <clears throat> yeah, nobody nobody that votes knows who Blue Goku is. <laughs> yes, somebody wrote in Blue Goku. Goku. Now, Hank, what is you, that? I'm so, a, okay, so Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I didn't grow up in that. Era. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in it, but my parents are like, "Yeah, you're not watching that," <laughs> and rightfully so. Uh, my, I, I knew Goku. I didn't know that there was differentiating between colors of Goku. Blue Goku is Goku is event, evidently blue haired Goku. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that was a thing, and well, I watched vote. Dragon Ball Z as a child. Yeah, he got a, he got a vote. Uh, the other two, I was really happy to see that both Daffy Duck and Donald Duck, both ducks. Got Got one vote, so there isn't a division there. It's, it's an equal amount of votes on the duck front. Bozo, which I took that as another jab against me. I, I took that as, hey, this guy's a clown. I, I like that. Thank you. I, if I could get a bunch of people to write in clown clown names, that's a happy election for me. Uh, this one I found interesting. Christ Jesus. Now, the thing I like about that, I think it's a really bold move to put the Christian name last when the first name is is Christ. I think that's a it's a bold move to go with Christ Jesus as opposed to Jesus Christ. Ron Burgundy got a vote. And then this one I enjoyed as well. Somebody just wrote the word me. <laughs> so, but joke's on you. That's a vote for me. So, uh, The other, the really good ones. Mm. Cornholio mm -hmm. from Beavis and Butthead, which I thought was hilarious because who the hell is... Who is old enough to know who Cornholio is and still immature enough to write <laughs> Cornholio? <laughs> uh, and then eggplant emoji. Someone wrote the word, the words, <laughs> eggplant emoji. <clears throat> and as we all know. That's a penis. <laughs> so, and then of course, Gabe Johnson. Uh, the, the, the part that I enjoyed the most was that uh, there were two votes for anybody. There were four votes for anybody else. And there were four four votes for just no thanks. Four votes for no thanks <laughs> is the greatest right in ever. I am going to start using that. No thanks. No thanks. So next campaign cycle, I think I'm going to do a campaign that is just Dave Bedeau, no thanks. Write in, no thanks. And see how many we can actually get. Uh, there was also one vote for just Matt. Every vote counts. Yeah. No last name. Well, Matt was almost mayor. It would have been really nice. I, I would actually get on board with that as well. It's like, you know, we're just going to we're just gonna select Matt, and then what are we going to do? Have a runoff? <laughs> All the Matts line Which up? Which Matt do you like the best? <laughs> what is the reason for not, for no one challenging you? Uh, I don't know. I, are they scared young. of you? No, I think it, we're still doing a pretty good job. I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this is an area that has always had traditionally older, the older generation doing all of the uh, the leading. And we just stepped up as a younger generation and we're doing a pretty good job. So, but I do know that I am pissing some people off and I'm okay with that. I'm all right with it. I'm pissing off about 49% of the people, <laughs> but that's okay. You have pissed off more people than I have. I've pissed off exactly 69, 69 people. Uh, Kanye West and Trump both got a vote as well. So Hey, let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, so I just wanted to talk real fast that last episode I had talked about how I wanted to do um, a game about a topic, and I wasn't quite ready because it wasn't quite fully baked. And so uh, that topic is actually Scientology. And the reason why I picked Scientology as a topic is because we had we had said that I just got back from a trip to Clearwater, Florida. Uh, I was unaware that Clearwater, Florida is the the yeah, like yeah, it is the world headquarters of Scientology, and uh, when when we were going there, I was aware that my fiance was going for classes, and I was aware that there was a tie to Scientology by Wait, these classes. Your, your fiance, my fiance, is going for Scientology. No, so she works for a vet. Okay, her boss. It's a small business. Has paid for her multiple times. Her boss, uh, a female, has paid for her multiple times to fly down to Florida and take leadership classes. And these leadership classes are not just related to sociology or, or Scientology, but are actually 
run by Scientology. So all of this I was unaware of until we actually got down there. So Flag Services is the name of the organization. Flag Services organization is the name of of the Scientology wing. And they've got multiple essentially shell companies that are various different things. They're somehow a nonprofit. So they've got these multiple nonprofits. And the flagship is the one located in Clearwater, and they run the whole show down there. So it, it it's one of those things where, like, you kind of learn. I learned that from her before we went down, and I was like, wait a minute. I didn't realize that this was, like, you were actually being taught by Scientology people. I thought it was just, hey, this lady kind of likes Scientology, but she's also teaching you how to, to manage some things. I don't think anybody kind of likes Scientology. <laughs> I'm on the fence. Yeah, I'm kind of into it. You know, well, I, think I got that, some good ideas. Well, when we, get, when we get further along, I think there's a lot of people that get really far into Scientology and they're like, well, let's pump the brakes on this, the second half of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- the reason why I brought it up is because my brain does this thing and I've kind of got used to just allowing it to do it. My brain does this thing where it's like, hey, hey, Dave, we're get, we see this thing that's a little weird over here. We're going to go in the back and we're just going to kind of start working on this. And uh, we'll get back to you when something comes up. But we're just going to give you a little red flag on that one. And it, it, it happened multiple times along the, the week that I didn't really put anything together until it all kind of congealed just the other day. So the first thing that I noticed was that there are no political signs when we were down there which stood out because this is election day. We actually flew down on election day and there were only just a handful of political signs. And where there was, it would be like a grouping of four signs on one block or something. But the rest of the land had no signs on it. And in my head, I just thought, oh, that's weird. I guess people don't really get into doing political signs in this area. That's that's fine. Uh, the first night we got in the, we got to the hotel, we we clocked in or <laughs> clocked in, clocked in the hotel and then took off. <laughs> We checked into the hotel and then we got an Uber and we drove to go uh, out to eat. And so the way Clearwater is set up is that you've got, it's on the opposite side of the bay from Tampa Bay, but then it's kind of a little peninsula type area. Uh, And then uh, there's an island on the other side. So Clearwater Beach, which is where all the nice hotels and stuff are, that's on, on an island on the other side of a causeway. The downtown area, which is where we were because Callie was going to... Uh, classes in the downtown area uh we were we were driving through that to go to the beach area and there's this giant building and Callie goes oh that's the Scientology building and it's massive it is a full block and it is seven stories lit up like a Christmas tree with a big old cross on the top and I immediately was like okay this is going to be fun because now I'm going to get interested in figuring this whole thing out it turns out that through the week I kind of got a little bit more information on it they have bought up five blocks in the downtown area there. And at first when I heard that, I was like, oh, just that's an organization that's, you know, kind of expanding or whatever. And uh, it just kind of, again, threw it in the back of my head. OK, so that's on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Callie goes to class at like eight in the morning. She comes back for her hour and a half lunch and uh, we hung out for a little bit. And then I walked her back to her class, which is like five blocks or something. And as we're walking, I'm doing the thing that you and I do a lot, Gabe, where because we're involved in a city, we, we take pictures of infrastructure, which is super sad. <laughs> super sad and embarrassing. Hey, look at this electrical box. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, I, you think that's a joke, but like, hey, we could do something like this. Yeah. So it's just her and I walking and me taking pictures of shit. And as we're going, I started to realize like, wait a minute, they're doing a lot of the things that we want to do. Like these are narrow lane roads. They've got medians. They've got a lot of trees. There are bollards, which is Gabe's thing. Loves a them. billion bollards. Please. You're, you're a bollards guy? A what? I, uh, bollards. It's the little bollard. posts that go about this high and yeah. stop cars. Stop cars. Uh, yeah. Like in the road? Yeah. We'll put them on the sidewalk. Protect oh, the pedestrians. I was like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> put them in the road. Sometimes they have retractable bollards. Well, in, in this case, they had retractable bollards. And their bollards were for right in the downtown area. They would put them up during the day. And then the businesses could use the street to actually have like seating for restaurants and all that stuff. All the stuff we talk about doing. Mm-hmm. All the cool stuff. So as we're walking, I'm like, man, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. And I started realizing that there's a lot of empty storefronts. And so in my head, I just said, well, it's probably just because of COVID. And as we're going, Callie's like, yeah, this used to be that. And 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 then the one that stuck out to me was there was a CVS. 
And she's like, that used to be a CVS. And I was like, it's brand new. And she goes, yeah, I have no idea what happened, but that used to be a CVS. We keep going, yada, yada, yada. Now they spent all their money on ballers. <laughs> <laughs> so on the way back, we go, we go get coffee. We're going to drop Kelly off. And all of a sudden, I see a news reporter. And that's why I'm glad you're here, Hanky, because I see a news reporter. And I, did, I have this philosophy that I learned in high school football. It's called get in the picture. And so when there's a picture going on, get yourself in the picture. Typically, that means if something good happens, you want to be there. You want to be involved. You want exactly. to be in the picture. In this case, it was, hey, Dave's on vacation in Florida, and that dude looks important because he's in a suit, and I'm going to walk through as they're doing their <laughs> as they're doing their news report in my br- guy, huh? in my bright ass <laughs> bright ass pink shirt. I, I've done it. I've done it as as bright of a pink shirt as you could possibly get. So as I'm walking through, I hear it's the mayor. So the mayor is giving an interview. We're right by City Hall. And he says, so to go back just a little bit, there was one political sign that we saw that said, vote yes for downtown Clearwater. And you know, typically when it's a vote yes sign, that's uh, a referendum of some sort. We're spending money. We're spending money. Yep. Vote yes so we can spend this money. And it's for downtown or uh, Clearwater. So I kind of do my long circle trying to get in the shot. Did not make the report, by the way. They oh, you cut, went back and watched it? They, I did. I looked it up. Oh, you it, gotta. It, yeah, I looked it up. It was a Fox News station down there. They, The section I walked through, he cut the video and just used the audio because I remembered the conversation. I was like, ah, oh, so I got in on the good stuff. But, I was, but uh, clearly I was annoying because I was the bright shirt. But the mayor had said, yeah, we've, you know, um, we were looking, we finally got a yes because the referendum went through on spending this money, we're going to revitalize this downtown area. In my head, I go, oh, cool, we got this stuff going on. But the next thing out of his mouth was was interesting because he's like, you know, there's been a lot of investment recently from Scientology. And so now, like, everything's kind of wrapping itself around. And we get back, we kind of go through the motions, and I started doing the deep dives. Like, first of all, it's like, we need to get into Scientology. We need to learn a little bit about what it's, what it's about. Then I remembered that the one guy told us Scientology had bought up like five blocks. It turns out that Scientology has bought 160 properties in the downtown area. Most of them, I shouldn't say most of them, but a large majority of them have been operating businesses. I shouldn't say most. I should just say a large majority. (laughs) Not most. Large majority, though. That's a better way. It's a better way of putting the same thing. (laughs) Hey, the button's there if you want to Oh, you're going to say something dumber. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Uh, a large number of the properties, i.e., I would assume the CVS, were operating businesses that Scientology has bought up and basically are just absorbing these properties and then letting them sit dormant and letting the area fail for one reason or another, which gets into the city stuff, which, Gabe, you and I have talked about this many times, the philosophy of what's the ask, right? Mm-hmm. There's a reason why Scientology would do that. They've got an ask and they're, they're, some goal is happening. And I don't know if it's that they were the ones behind the referendum, if, they, if they're the ones in, with these properties, because what it was for was the selling of two properties for two large developments, 400 condominiums or whatever, and business or in, uh, uh, mixed use underneath. So either they were for or against the two things, but for clear, very clearly, Scientology is trying to l- just let that go desolate. Need We need revitalization. There we, are no tenants down there. There are no tenants there. So the whole thing just kind of wrapped itself back around where I was like, this is actually super fascinating with all of the things that you just kind of see as you go through the motions and being stupidly in- interested in, in civic crap. So mm-hmm. my interest in bollards led to, hey, by the way, this organization is buying up a bunch of... <laughs> Hey, is that a bollard over there? <laughs> is it like its own it's, community? I, uh, so it's its own city, right? Okay. So, and then the way that it's set up is you've got, it's it's uh, a chunk within a bay and then the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. But then there's a little area between it and the island. So it has its own little island, which is where the beachfront is. And that's all swanky, you know, decked out hotels. But the downtown is kind of in between those two water areas and should be very well developed. You could tell by what they've done, this should be developed. And that's why it stuck out is why isn't this developed? And it was definitely because somebody got involved and and was paying a lot of money, turns out, to buy these businesses and just shut them down. Wait, Scientology has money? Yeah, Scientology has a lot of money. And so all of that... (laughs) 
25 minutes into this episode <laughs> is just to get to the game. Everybody knows what time it is. Game, game time. Who? Dave? Yeah. Did you see that Scottie Pippen's wife is banging yes, Michael Jordan's I son? Did, I did see that. Did you see someone <laughs> heckle them? Yeah, they got heckled at the football game. <laughs> so yeah, Scottie Pippen's ex wife is banging Michael Jordan's son. That's insane. <laughs> that'll, break, that'll break a friendship for sure. <laughs> If it already hadn't. Okay, so we're 25 minutes in on this, so we got to get going. I, I apologize for that long tirade, but it it puts this game into a nice little package because not only is this a organization that has money, this is an organization that has lots of money, enough money to buy a lot of property in an entire town that they just happened to, in 1977, get raided from the FBI because they tried to take over that town in the 70s. <laughs> oh, they're oh. around two. Literally had a coup. Surprised so they're a 501, know. like C3, the nonprofit. So the nonprofits correctly don't pay taxes. Yes. So of course they have insane amounts of money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And th so the way that this organization is set up is very fascinating. You uh, Basically, it's based off the, the principle of Dianetics, which is a... a uh, <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It's a philosophy that L. Ron Hubbard uh -oh. came came up with. Came up with. <laughs> it's like, it's been one week. It's been one That's week why he's Florida. really down there. He's like going to be one of their head guys. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a game. I'm going to go Here's back to my I'm podcast. Going to sell Scientology to you guys. It's just a game. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a little. Just the tip. Just what the Scientology tip. Yeah. Dianetics is the idea of like diving internally to find out what your ticks are from the past. Like what problems did you have in the past and then working through to just remove them and give them no power over you. It's an interesting concept. Okay. And how far into the past? Well, let's, that's what the game is going to be about. Okay. okay. So this game is four called, life cycles ago. This yeah. game is called Scientology or, or this, <laughs> this, this game is called sci-fi or Scientology. And so just to give you a little bit of, uh, of uh, the background, L. Ron Hubbard wrote in the 50s, Dianetics. It was huge. He actually made a ton of money off of it. And then... Decided it, to turn it into a church. Well, so even worse. It became a fad and it sank so fast that he actually went bankrupt and lost it. So then he took those principles and said, well, screw it. We'll just make a church out of this and did the same thing only as a church. And that's how Scientology came around. Okay. So Scien... Uh, so L. Ron Hubbard was a science fiction writer. He lost the rights to Dianetics and decided to create a religion formulated on the same principles. And things got weird, my little thing says. So uh, Scientology teaches that humans... <laughs> my that... thing says, did they write this for you? <laughs> <laughs> so you know too much about this. Listen, I just spent two weeks coming up with this damn thing. Now shut up and play the game. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Scientology teaches that uh, a human is an immortal a spirit being called a Thetan that resides in a physical body that has innumerable past lives, of course. The goal of Scientology is to work your way up yeah. to higher levels and spend a lot of money in the process, usually upwards of like $380,000 to get to the, the, good, the good stuff. Oh, that's pretty yeah, that, bad. that seems low. Yeah. To become an operating yeah. Thetan. Based on who we know is a Scientologist, or right? Like the, people, the people that we know Travolta? are Scientologists, three hundred eighty thousand dollars is nothing. That's just to get to operating Thetan level three, where you're going to find out the information that they divulge. So, forewarning: this is for the, our audience and our participants. The Church of Scientology holds <laughs> that the higher levels of of initiation, the mystical teachings, are imparted. Uh, imparted that may... I can't read. You know that. Yeah, do I need to read this for you? Yeah, imparted <laughs> that may be harmful to the unprepared readers. These teachings are kept secret from members who have not reached these levels. The organization says that the secrecy is warranted to keep materials use in context. That's very important. We got to keep this in context mm -hmm. and to protect the members from being exposed to materials which they are not prepared. So are you prepared to hear about Scientology? No. As a game. All right. Well, yeah, okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not falling for this shit, Dave. But... <laughs> Hanky, are you prepared as a, as a resident of Florida? I have a Florida. choice. You lock the door behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lock on me, so. 
All right. So the first uh, the first question is true or false? Okay. True or false? And we'll start with Scott and we'll go our way around. Set in the hybrid world of sword and sorcery and technology, Scientology tells of many moral themed encounters on the planet Ethernia. Ethernia. Two forces battle to prevent one another from gathering the secrets of mysterious ancient forces containing great magic power. Hmm. Surprised you didn't know that. Again, true or false? Um, sword and sorcery, you said? Set in a hybrid world of sword, sorcery, and technology. Oh, oh. swords, sorcery, sorcery and, and technology. technology. What is that? Is your statement true or your statement is it is, Scientology? Is it Scientology? Is it Scientology? Uh, okay. Um, because it's totally false. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's false. That's definitely false. Um, I mean, we'll we'll start with false. Okay, I'm going to start with false. Over to Gabe. That ain't no Scientology. Okay, he says that ain't no Scientology. Over Say to you. one more time, please. <laughs> okay, so uh, set in a hybrid world of sword, sorcery, and technology, Scientology tells them of many moral-themed encounters on the planet Eternia. Excuse me, Eternia. Two forces battle to prevent one another from gathering the secrets of a mysterious ancient fortress containing great magical powers. That's, yeah, it sounds like... Uh, isn't that Highlander? You going false on that? <laughs> I go false because it sounds like, yeah, Dragon Ball Z or something. Yeah. <laughs> it is false. That is He-Man. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. That is He-Man. All right, here we go. All right, so that one's false. All right, number two, true or false? Gabe, you'll go first on this one. All right, true or false? Our planet is frequented by extraterrestrial life forms who live on Earth but hide their existence from ordinary humans. Mm -hmm. Scientology holds that a secret organization who supervises these life forms must be maintained so that those unaware of their existence are not overwhelmed by this knowledge. Tactics of this organization and its agents include but are not limited to the use of advanced technology and memory erasing. True or false? Techno or is that Scientology? That's about as Scientology as it gets. So he's going true. Over to Hanky. I was going to go with true. Hanky says true as well. Over to I Scott. I also say true. That is the movie Men in Black. I don't know what it switched me off with. Like, that's so nobody's got a point yet. Well, that sucks. That is definitely Thanks for leading this wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we all, we all read up the first one. Right. Everything time. I know about Scientology, oh, I learned from self. That's right. You guys did get you did get that right. Yes, Scientology. the first one. Yeah, the first one. Right. Uh, yes, uh, South Park has a great episode about Scientology. Okay, number three. So we're we're two down here. It's all been science fiction. Is this Scientology? Uh, Hanky, you will go first. All right. 75 million years ago, a tyrant ruler of the Galactic Confederacy was determined to was determined to deal with overpopulation. Scientology explains how the ca he captured and brought billions of aliens from various planets to Earth, at that time known as Tigikak, in a spaceship that resembled a Douglas DC-8 I'm going to read that again. In a spacecraft <laughs> resembling Douglas DC-8 airliners, only with rocket engines. These life forms were stacked around volcanoes near present-day Hawaii, and hydrogen bombs were then detonated in false. the volcanoes to kill all of them. Like, no, I'm gonna go with false. He's going false. Over to Scott. Is that Scientology? Like Gabe said, all of my Scientology knowledge comes from South Park. And I remember spaceships and volcanoes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I do think they looked like airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Specifically, the DC-8s. Yeah. Or whatever the hell you said. True. I'm going true. Scott's going with true over to I'm going to go true. That is absolutely Scientology. Uh, 75 right. million years ago, the okay. Galactic Confederacy had a dictator, and he needed to get rid of all overpopulation. I thought you were going Star Wars there for a second. Yep, so he, he packed them into airplanes that just happened to subconsciously later in, in influence the look of the DC-8. That's <laughs> 75 they, million years ago. Yeah, Hanky, what did you do when you lived in Florida? <laughs> I went to school. <laughs> I got a degree. Yeah. I know it's unheard of. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to actually go and learn. Yeah, clearly not taking on the the, the appropriate not. stuff here. All right, so question four. We've now established what, what uh, Scientology is. Uh, this is multiple choice, and this is over to Scott. Uh, what was the name of the intergalactical tyrannical leader? Was it Kinu? 
Was it B Zenu? Was it C Menu? Or was it <laughs> Menu? Or was it Or was it D Al Pacino? <laughs> uh, B Zenu. B Zenu. Over to over to Hanky. B. He's saying B Only as well. It is absolutely. <laughs> Zenu, the intergalactic leader. Zenu. I like how it was. What was the first one? Zenu. No, it was the, that was what the was second it? one. Oh, that Kino. was B. Kino. Kino. So you did. Kino so you did. Kino so you just took Zenu and did a K, and then you took Zenu and did an M, and instead Wait, of so it being menu, it was, was menu, menu because that's the word menu. Because I wrote the word menu. That's absolutely what happened. I wrote the word. It actually says afterwards. It says menu, and then it says spelt, and then I just wrote the word menu again. <laughs> Menu, spelt menu. Well, I totally see your train of thought there. Like, yeah, I'll just put an M there. Oh, wait, that says menu. I'm just going to say menu. Yep, I, I laughed. I laughed when that happened. Uh, Would it be you don't want a fifth sandwich? So absolutely, the tyrannical leader's name was Xenu, 75 million years ago. Xenu was, Xenu was, about to dispo, was about to be disposed of power. So he devised of a plot to eliminate the excess population from his domain, his dominions. With the assistance of psychiatrists, which is why uh, Scientologists hate psychiatrists, he gathered billions of citizens under the pretense of income tax inspections. Then he paralyzed and froze them with a mixture of alcohol and glycol to capture their souls. The kidnapped populace was loaded into spacecraft for transport to the site of extermination, the planet Tegak. Or I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it doesn't matter because it's Earth. The appearance of these spacecraft would later be subconsciously expressed in the design of the Douglas DC-8. <laughs> the only difference being that the DC-8 has fans and propellers and the spacecraft didn't. Okay. So. Uh, C. <laughs> that was, or is that false? That, no, that's not. That's just, reading, that's just me reading stuff. All right. So continuing our story of Scientology. It's him spreading the good word. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to sneak it in. Like, oh, we're just playing a game. And here's five minutes of me. <laughs> if, you, if, if you're trying to think that I think you should, you should believe in this, it, yeah, maybe you're right. You're definitely not getting me after you've been reading this stuff. All right, we're going to move quickly through this. Question number five. <clears throat> And I'll take a minute because I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give you some more information before I ask you a question. The now, the now disembodied victim souls, which Hubbard called Thetans, were blown into the air by the blast. They were captured by Xenu's forces using an electrical ribbon and sucked into vacuum zones around the world. The hundreds of billions of captured Thetans were taken to a type of cinema where they were forced to watch 3D super colossal motion picture for 36 days. This implanted what Hubbard termed various misleading data into the memories of the hapless Thetans. Hubbard specifically attributed the Roman Catholicism uh, and the image of the crucifix to this influence of Xenu. These souls are now have now attached themselves to current day humans and are the cause of all of our unwanted stress and anguish. So the question is True. false. <laughs> All the above. The question is the answer is false. But the question is within Scientology, what is the name for the, this major traumatic event? And Gabe, you're going to go first. Is it A, the before times? Is it B, Tuesday? Is it C, the space time <laughs> alpha? Or is it D, incident two? Oh, that's two turn. Never mind. Yeah. I was going to say, what was A and C? A and B was worthless. C was space time sp alpha. Space time alpha or incident two. In incident. I'm gonna two. say alpha is two. Is just two amateur hours. So I'm gonna say incident two. Incident two. He says over to Hanky. So what were real quick? A the before times. B Tuesday. C space time alpha and D incident two. I go with I, C for fun. C he <laughs> says I couldn't tell you what incident one was. <clears throat> if there was. That's when he <laughs> shipped him off no that the whole thing is incident two the whole thing is incident two according to this okay so d incident two <laughs> incident two is correct <laughs> i'm an idiot you moron <laughs> i'm an idiot <laughs> 
So what I was trying to say before I did that was, uh, no, this could be any of the four <laughs> options. It isn't specifically D. It's <laughs> incident two is the whole oh, yeah, thing. Everything's incident two. Well, Mess then my answer's up. incident two, sir. All right. Well, so uh, Hanky, you're you're you're. I lack, was going to say there. A. I was going to say the before time. So because of that, I'm going to give Gabe the leg up here. Scott, you're going to face Hanky in the the. Uh, the runoff. The, yeah, the runoff question here. We're in Georgia. And we are we are back to uh, true or false. Uh, Scott, do you want to go first on this? No. You do not. All right. So <laughs> Hanky's going to go first. <laughs> true or false? Give, give the guest the, no, the, yeah, the, the spectrum I, I of answers. That. That's right. But one or two. <laughs> one or two. Uh, Hanky, it's over a to you. Game anyways, for me. Mm-hmm. True or false? It is said that once you reach the highest OT levels, you obtain superpowers such as telepathy and telekinesis. The heck is OT? OT is operating Thetan. That is when you are top dog. That's when you've donated over five million. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna is go with true. Or true. False? He says true. Over to Scott. True or false? Well, Scott's stuck with. I, I know he is. I just. Uh, I like well, why can't question? he say that, that too? You get superpowers, Do telekinesis, you, and her telepathy, and you're said to get superpowers, which in, which may include telep- telepathy or telekinesis, hmm. or may not. So Scott yeah, says might, you might get <laughs> this <laughs> if you don't. You <laughs> Sorry, Scott says false. I do say false. The, the answer is. I mean, it is false. However, the answer is true. Is yeah, it? let's go. <laughs> Anki Q in the building. He knows the Scientology. <laughs> in Scientology, once you reach a high enough level, and that and people are actually actively aware of this, that they are trying to get superpowers. That that's a part of what you're aware of early on. The rest of this story, the the Xenu story and all of that, you become operating Thetan level three. So there originally were eight levels of operating Thetan, or Thetan, uh, until Aunt L. Ron Hubbard died of a stroke. And the day he died, the new guy got up on stage and said, hey, everybody, L. Ron has now surpassed to operating Thetan level nine, which means he has cast aside his earthly body and is now moving about the cosmos. So they went from eight until he died. And then we're like, hey, by the way, there's just another level and he's gone. He didn't have a stroke. No stroke. Just cast aside his earthly body. It sounds better than a stroke. So now they have like 15 levels. The new guy upped it from 8 to 15, oh. which is, that's ballsy. Well, when, you, you, when, you got you to le- when you got to level 3 for like the price of a house, <laughs> <laughs> you knew you were going to need 15 to 18 levels to actually like make money. Yeah. How are you going to, uh, otherwise, how are you going to buy up the entire Clearwater area? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the last question, and this is uh, for Gabe and Hanky. Uh, Gabe, you can choose to go first or you can choose to go second, whichever one you would like. The question is, well, so L. Ron Hubbard holds the Guinness World Record for the most published works. The question is how many? And now, Gabe, you can. So that part is, so you're saying it's true? It's true. He has the Guinness World Record for most published works, which because they were given a nonprofit uh, uh, church exemption, Hmm. These books are now all considered religious texts. How many books? And it's not necessarily books. It's published works. So he yeah. could have been published in an, an article as well. Right. He could have pissed on a napkin and called it a published Yep. Mm-hmm. So you're going to guess a number, and then Gabe is going to say higher or lower. That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. So you, how many is the Guinness World Record for the amount of published works? Jeez. Just taking a stab in the dark. 1,300? 1,300, Gabe. Oh, you're going to go above or below. Guess. That's a good guess. <laughs> it is I was a... hoping you'd go really high or really <laughs> low. So for a little bit of extra information, his final Thank work, you. His I final works... Uh, was were, number... No, they were, <laughs> they, were, they were published between... I probably would do that. Uh, published between February of 1934 and March of 2006, he died in 1986. So he was current. He was constantly writing all the way up till then. So they were just publishing his stuff even after he died for 20 years after he oh, died. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. Yep. So Gabe, is it more or less than 1300? God, that's a good guess. You know, like Jesus, like said a lot of things, but they put it all in one book. Mm-hmm. L. Ron Hubbard. Well, he wrote a lot. It was lo- about 1,300, I wanted to say. He wrote a lot of novels as well. 
And well, you, he didn't write thirteen hundred novels, though. No, he didn't. But thir- it, it, I'm going to say more. He's gonna, Gabe is going to say more. The correct answer is one thousand. 84 oh. books. It was an amazing guess. A, on, yeah. <laughs> so, and then here's the fun part is it, it, Hazy, or <laughs> Hazy, <laughs> Hanky, we did, forgot to remind you at the beginning of the episode, but we told you before we started that if you won, you had to say something very specific. Go ahead and say something to your fans. <clears throat> Hello. Well, uh, I was going to say something welcome. Hello. <laughs> and? Goodbye. <laughs> Hazy, that is incorrect. Longtime <laughs> listeners know that the correct and only answer is hello and congratulations. And of course, you are all losers because we went some way too much time on Scientology. I did technically say congratulations to him earlier. I, yeah. I am the winner because I spent an entire week down in the motherland just absorbing all of this stuff. Very jealous. Yeah, that 1300 is a good guess. That's That's a really you got to get a half it. Have that, a win on that that's one. a really good guess. I appreciate it. So I, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that this not only did – so they went from the 50s or 60s all the way to like 1993, I believe it was, before they were given nonprofit status. And the reason they were given nonprofit status is because they went and sued the IRS – because the the IRS was asking for like billions of dollars, forty percent of their money, and yes. and all of the back stuff that they weren't paying, and so they went and just put all these lawsuits at the IRS until the IRS just caved in and said, "All right, we'll get rid of all these lawsuits. We'll give you nonprofit status." And they did like a, an announcement in a stadium that said, "The war is over." Unbelievable. And now they're just a fistful of money. And there's only like in the U.S. There's only like twenty five hundred followers of this as far as i as far as i saw the worldwide like there's a high f- status like celebrities and like athletes or like who are these like people there's not just like regular people like us some of them are so some of them are like it, one of the things that's happening now is it's been around for so long that people are grew up in this and then now are leaving because a lot of them get to a certain point and they're like this is nonsense what's happened with a bunch well, of maybe pe- it is a religion then <laughs> <laughs> Once people stop believing it, then it's a religion. Uh, yeah. They, so what's happened with a lot of these is uh, people get to the OT3 level. And what happens is they sit you down in a room and you get handed a locked briefcase and you open up the briefcase and there is a small piece of paper. Is it backlit? It, it shiny? No, I'm gold. sure it is. I'm sure it is. You can't leave the room. It's probably got the handcuff on it. They open it up and there's a handwritten letter with this space story on it. It says you being got that L. Ron, and <laughs> then there's still five levels above that originally. So you get handed that and they're like, well, wait a minute. I clearly don't understand any of this. Now I got to give you all my money. And maybe that's the trick of it. Maybe the trick of it was that he, he was like, if I put this at you at this point, then you're going to go like, what's going on? Why do I not understand this and try to continue forward? Um, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy that this is a continuing thing. And not only that, that I just witnessed how effective it is in its purchasing power. They have shut down an entire downtown area in an area that should be vibrant. Given everything that, that you've seen in terms of the city hall is there, 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 there's a police department that's down there, there uh, parks and rec departments down there. There are jobs that are centered around this area and it's all vacant. It's absurdly vacant. It was it was amazing that enough that to the wear. The police department's vacant? No, the police department is mm. vacant, but all the other buildings around are and uh, supposedly there's the mayor is good friends with some people in Scientology. <clears throat> uh, rightfully so. If you're going to sure. be the mayor, you're probably going to be He's probably getting a, a pretty bit. penny, too. Yeah, what are you trying to tell us, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, are I'm you, telling you. I just want to know how you know so much about this. Because if this is stuff that's supposed to be like secret. Oh, it's right? all over the internet. It's all over the internet. He dropped $380,000. Well, about the, the part when you go into a, a room and they, they open up that whatever yeah. bookcase. Well, so what happened with that is enough people got to that point and then said, this is nonsense. I've I've spent $200,000 on absolute nonsense. And then those people have fallen off. And there's a good handful of them. The, but the thing of Scientology is that they refer to those people as SPs, suppressive persons. And you are supposed to completely distance yourself from that. It's You are basically labeled a criminal if you are a person that starts to speak against it. And their whole entire religion then turns its back on you as well. So it's crazy. I So there is some stuff at the beginning about like internal, like looking internally and trying to find 
issues that you've had in your life and how to work through that and how that should make you a better person. There's nothing wrong with that. But the idea that at some point, all of that and all of the time and money and energy leads to you getting handed a briefcase with a handwritten note in it that, that starts off with, Xenu was the intergalactic <laughs> supremacy lord that yeah. blew people up. Uh, the DC-10 thing is the greatest part of the whole ordeal. Just how do you... It just happened you... to be published mm -hmm. at the same time the DC-10 was released. <laughs> well, that's the other part is that supposedly... The aliens that lived in this civilization were like exactly the same as Earth people in the 50s when he wrote it. Like, oh, it's like the same thing. They got cars. They look the same. Everything's the same. 75 million years ago, but it's the same thing. It's the same time. What I don't get about Scientology is it, as, as a relig religion, most religions that I know are about the origin of everything. Mm-hmm. But Scientology is just the origin of us, the yeah, humans. Earth. Yeah, how did Earth get populated? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and and actually, so much that it actually says in their writings early on that they're not a like they don't disvalue you being a Christian or you being uh, you know Hindu or whatever. Those are all allowed. Other religions are allowed within this religion, which is just hmm. crazy. It's it doesn't uh, make sense. Hey. As long as you got money, they're making hand over fist. It, that that's ridiculous. I so I saw the mecca. I was like, that's crazy. I need to like actually look into this. And then slowly hearing like, oh, they bought it five blocks. And five blocks, you're like, okay, well, that one building's one block. The one of the initial buildings they bought was the hotel across the street. That's half a block. Okay, so that's not that much. When I read that they have purchased 160 properties in an area that property should not be that inexpensive, it's ridiculous. Like that is. That's something pretty successful. And then to watch that they just had a referendum right now and whether or not, who knows what side that's on. Cause it's, what's the ask? The ask is there. They're looking for an ask and whether or not they got beat to the punch and, and the people spoke up against them. Or if what you do much like, remember the, a couple of years ago when the Minnesota legislators, they kept trying to give themselves a raise, the Minnesota legislators, and they couldn't do it because, uh, they would have to vote for themselves to give themselves a raise. And nobody wants to do that because you're going to get ousted the next time. So what they did was they convinced the public. We'll create an independent panel to determine if we need a raise or not. You got you guys should have the ability to make that decision, not us. So there was a constitutional amendment to Minnesota to make it so that they couldn't give themselves a raise. And guess how long it took for that raise to happen? The very first year that the independent panel met, they got a raise. In March. <laughs> it was three months. It yeah. took three after like years of not being able to get it done. They convinced the public that, oh, you have that right. And then it happened in three months. Yep. So now they get a raise every year after <laughs> having not had a raise in 25 years. That independent panel that you select and make sure that, you know, your buddy that's uh, giving you all the, the goodies behind the, the counter. If you're a regular dude and you want to get into it, not saying that I do. <laughs> How does one go about it? So evidently you cannot get in. You can't walk into Scientology in Clearwater and actually uh, – do classes it's the one place they don't allow it so california they have a thing that's called the celebrity center mm -hmm. and they over there they they have a really smart idea we're going to make this a place where celebrities come and you can maybe see a celebrity inside the celebrity center i think it's on like hollywood boulevard yeah. i saw it when i was down in yeah. la yeah. yeah and it's big got scientology written big yeah. in letters this one down there is just like you can tell it looks like a spanish fort of some kind you know it's like oh this is definitely a, a monastery or something it's crazy Big, huge cross on the top. I find so the why cross. why the cross? Well, that's the part I found interesting. Well, he explains it. Yeah, because Zeno implanted that in people's heads, and, and uh, it's got a tie. And it, No, I, that's exactly what I said as well. Wait a minute. Are you, so you, you're not a religion, but you're going to make sure that people think you are a religion by putting a cross on well, the top. Well, when they started as a religion, Christianity was the predominant religion oh. of the nation. So you yep. throw a cross on there, and you can drop yep. people in. Pretty soon, it'll be a rainbow flag. Get rid of the cross. <laughs> <or a rainbow laughs> flag. Yeah. So anyways, I... I thought it was fascinating, more fascinating that now I've got to go have like a talk with Callie and make sure that she's okay. Because now it's like, we've been in the belly of the beast and she's been, she spent a whole week. She's been doing it for years. For years. <laughs> she has went down there multiple times. I would say probably seven times probably is pretty accurate. There was a couple times where she, her boss was trying to get her down there like a couple times a year. And 
they're not doing Scientology stuff, but they're definitely yes, it's like they borderline. Are. They're definitely mm. doing Scientology it's like stuff. They'll just keep putting a little bit in at a time, yeah. a little bit in at a time, and say, "Oh, not that bad." Hey, I listen, guess Zeno is not a bad guy. This is Zeno. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll be fascinating to see uh, where that leads to. This last time she was down there, she was the one project she was telling me about was she had wrote a script on how to make a peanut butter sandwich. And I said, did you put peanut butter on both sides of the, of the bread? And she said, no. And I said, fail. So Scientology is doing it wrong. Because she got like an A on her, how to make a peanut butter sandwich. I'm sorry, what? The idea, behind, the idea behind it is being able to communicate to your employees what the task at hand Every is. Every single step necessary. Every yeah. single yeah. step. Okay. Yeah. Like you're right. That's a big, sure. I uh, remember having to do that in yeah. school. Where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you didn't tell the person that they have to pick up the knife. Yeah, yeah. Open the mm-hmm. fridge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did it start with an intergalactic confederacy? <laughs> start again. So anyways, that's the end of the episode. I, I just being down there and being immersed in that for a week and then like seeing the little things along the way. The reason why there's no political signs is because nonprofit organizations cannot have a political affiliation. So they can't have political signs on their property. They owned all the property around us. There can be no political signs. So it was like these little things that kept like popping up and my brain was going, Hey, that's weird. Well, we'll get back to you on that, Dave. Dave, we're going to go take a look at this and we'll get back to you on that. And as it slowly started to come around that, uh, I don't know, man. That's a lot of money. 160 properties in in look. You bought a CVS. You bought a CVS and just shut it down. That's crazy. That's crazy town. The Rothschilds is part of that Scientology. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a good way to. I always thought that this is a good way to to protect your money. Like mm-hmm. I always thought, like give it you, to some scam church. <laughs> <you know? Yeah. laughs> that sounds like the worst way to protect your money. If you're Tom Cruise, and I'm not saying this is happening, but if you're Tom Cruise and the guy that's running it is like your buddy, buddy. He says, yeah, you just give us that. It's, it's a tax donation. We'll take that money in and then we'll just do whatever you want. Cause they, they use their workforce to deck out his limousine, fix his hangar. And you know, you give us the money and then we'll give you all this labor. It, it It's, I always viewed it as money laundering. That's how I view, always viewed it. But evidently it's not evidently it's space. So he actually, L Ron Hubbard actually referred to it as the space opera, the goddamn space opera. <laughs> Before George Lucas. That's unbelievable. I was going to say, isn't that Star Wars? <laughs> All right, so thank you to Scott. Yes. Thank you to Gabe. Dave, I always say it's a good time, but today it kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> a long episode, too. I apologize. And over to Hanky Hankleton. Hanky Hankleton? God damn. I have had people call me some interesting names. I did have a lady who did call me Hazy for a did while. Did she? I kind of like that. And though. I was just like, I, I finally asked, I was like, what'd you say? She goes, Hazy. And I said, it's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> How long oh, did you I let this go on? That. Uh, well, the thing is, like, you meet so many people. Yeah. Just last night at Dobro's, a lady was staring at me, and I just kind of like, hey. oh. "How you doing?" And then she goes, "You don't remember me?" No, I don't remember you. <laughs> like, I've met how many people? Because it's like, oh, you need to remember people's names. So the next time, it's like, yeah, I'm here to shoot a story, and sorry to tell you, but I'm here to get my paycheck. So, thank you for giving me this story. Now on to the next. But yeah. I mean, there are some stories where it's like you really like it. But then there's some people, you know, I won't say his name. Hopefully, he won't be watching this. Actually, I really don't really care. But yeah. there was something about uh, veterans, and it was a kids doing something for the veterans. So it's all about the kids. He wasn't even there. Yes, he's a veteran, but he was there to take pictures, etc. Well, then he goes, "Hey, do you need an interview from me?" And I said, "Oh, well, I said I actually got what I needed, but um, I'll let you know." In reality, no. And then he had to go up in front of everyone. He's like, I just want to say something. It's like, bro, this isn't, I mean, it's about you, but it's not about you. A lot of people It's about all veterans. Yeah. Well, then I was getting ready to leave and he's like kind of in the background, just standing there for a second. And he goes, it's your last chance. (laughs) I said, hey man, I appreciate it, but I got what I needed. You have my presence. I'm not going to be here forever. I may hit OT9. (laughs) Shuffle off this mortal coil. I hope it happens soon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, my God. And with that, (laughs) we're done.
was the name of the intergalactical tyrannical leader? Was it Kinu? Was it B Zenu? Was it C Menu? Or was it <laughs> Menu? Or was it Or was it D Al Pacino? <laughs> uh, B Zenu. B Zenu. Over B. to over to Hanky. B. He's saying B Only as well. It is absolutely. <laughs> Zenu, the intergalactic leader. Zenu. I like how it was. What was the first one? Zenu. No, it was the, that was what the was second it? one? Oh, Kino. Was B. Kino. Kino. So you did. Kino so you did. So you just took Zenu and did a K, and then you took Zenu and did an M, and instead Wait, of so it being menu, it was, was menu, menu because that's the word menu. Because I wrote the word menu. That's absolutely what happened. I wrote the word. It actually says afterwards. It says menu, and then it says spelt, and then I just wrote the word menu again. <laughs> Menu, spelt menu. Uh, I totally see your train of thought there. Like, yeah, I'll just put an M there. Oh, wait, that says menu. I'm just going to say menu. Yep, I, I laughed. 